Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you. Aye, aye, Captain! Oh, who's the fastest gaming trip every day? Core i 9 k That's right, Captain. It's late 2019, and the Intel Core i9 9900K 8-core 16-thread CPU is still the fastest gaming desktop processor on the market. But today, it finally gets overthrown by itself. Intel's got a new chip coming up soon. This is just an unboxing video, but the review embargo will be lifting shortly. This is the Core i9-9900KS. S as in Sam, not F as in Frank. The KF is the one that doesn't have integrated graphics. That's slightly cheaper. This is totally different, sort of different. It's a highly binned variant of the existing 9900K, which means it can turbo right out of the box on all cores to five gigahertz. 4.7 gigahertz all core turbo, five gigahertz all core turbo. That also means we're talking about a higher TDP, going from 95 watts to 125, 27, something like that. So out of the box, this chip will definitely have higher thermal and power requirements than this one as well. Apart from that, they're more or less identical. This still has integrated graphics. It's still got hyper threading, uh, smart cache and all that stuff. It's just faster out of the box, has a higher TDP, and of course is gonna come with a premium over the 9900K. What that premium is gonna be yet, we have no idea. Uh, we'll find out once the review embargo lifts. But let's go ahead and unbox this sucker and just see what's inside. I have no idea if they sent me a retail sample or if it's like just in a oh what is this this is interesting it looks like a proper retail box or maybe it's a press press sample box okay oh it's just it's the same exact packaging it's just in a fancy box okay so there's a bag so the 9900k box says unlocked this says unlocked special edition. I seriously think these are the coolest and most annoying retail packages ever, like for a CPU. What even is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. Dodecagon? It's like a Japanese puzzle. Okay, yeah, we got it open. So this is an engineering sample. It does say Intel Confidential on it. Unboxing videos are already pretty pointless for, for big launches like this. Actually, you could argue for most, if not all launches. But an unboxing video for a CPU is especially silly because there's really nothing physical to talk about. It is exactly the same as every other Coffee Lake CPU, but still people want to see it for some reason, so I'm making a video about it. So there it is, uh, gold contacts, they're still gold. There's still 1151 of them, and uh, the IHS is, is good, looks great, not cracked or anything, in great shape. Thank you for watching this video. So the chip also lists its base clock of four gigahertz. A lot of people may not see uh, the value in the CPU right off the bat because there's a lot of uh, users out there who own 9900Ks that can already hit five gigahertz on all cores through manual overclocking. But there's a big difference to a select group of people, there's a big difference between a CPU that can hit five gigahertz out of the box versus one that can't. What I mean by that is there's a lot of reasons why you should overclock. There's a lot of good reasons why I suggest people do, but there's also a fair amount of reasons why you wouldn't want to overclock. For one, you're voiding your warranty, not that Intel would be able to very easily tell if you were overclocking your CPU should you return it, but for those who want to play things by the book, it makes sense to, to want to stray away from that to some degree. And there's also the risk factor of potentially damaging the CPU in the overclocking process or potentially the motherboard or something like that. Small chance, very, very small chance of that happening, but for some people that worst case scenario is scary enough to want to stray them away from potentially harming their $500 plus investment, which I completely understand as well. Now, assuming those risk factors don't apply to you and you fall into that group of people who are comfortable with overclocking, with a 9900K, you're still not guaranteed that you're gonna be able to hit five gigahertz on all eight cores. I was actually just looking it up on siliconlottery.com and they said, uh, they found in their testing that, that only the top 37% of the their 9900 KFs were able to hit five gigahertz on all cores. They didn't have the spec numbers or the data for just the regular K variant. But that is to say that less than half of these things will be able to hit five gigahertz on all cores, even if you're manually overclocking. And let's just say you do get that golden K sample that's able to hit five gigahertz. Chances are you're still gonna have to push more voltage through it to sustain those frequencies than you would with a highly binned version of that same CPU, simply based on the difference of silicon quality. And as you know, feeding a CPU higher amounts of voltage, especially if it's constant, can potentially reduce its lifespan, not to mention all of the additional heat that's incurred during operation, which for a computer component is never good. Now, yes, of course you could delid the CPU to help improve thermals and reduce voltage requirements and things like that, but then there's another risk factor there too. You could potentially damage your CPU. In fact, a much higher chance of something going wrong than if you were simply overclocking, and that's a chance, understandably so, a lot of people don't want to take. So I'm not trying to say all this to scare people away or stray them away from these enthusiast level activities. In fact, I encourage them 
uh, at your own risk, of course. I'm just trying to make a point that there's a group of people who can still buy a $500 enthusiast level CPU and not want to touch it or tweak it in the slightest. And that's okay. And for those group of people, for that slice, that small slice of the customer base pie, this CPU might be an attractive option. Obviously, I haven't tested this thing yet. I literally just took it out of the box in front of you, but I do have some first impressions. I think more or less it's gonna tell the same story as the 9900K, and that story is, Gaming, if all you care about is gaming, gaming is the primary intensive task that you're gonna be doing with your system and you could care less about anything else, these are your boys. They do a fantastic job of that, but as soon as you introduce multi-threaded workloads and content creation, then you really have to start examining and considering the other side uh, because the Ryzen 3000 series processors offer a lot of versatility, a lot of bang for the buck, and they're really strong contenders uh, when, you're, when you're talking about a multitude of different workloads. And I think at the end of the day, that's why I'm not super excited about this CPU. It's because it's not really a game changer. It's not gonna change the status quo or be the CPU that Intel needs to disrupt the market. What the KS essentially is, is Intel beating themselves in a specific category, which is gaming, saying we're the best gaming CPU, and look, with this release, we're still the best gaming CPU, but even by a wider stretch. Uh, and that's fine, that's just not super exciting. If a uh, world record's to be broken, it's usually more uh, exciting when it's two competitors trying to top each other rather than one person just upping their game, uh, you know, again and again. So it's exciting for some people, but it's definitely not gonna be the processor that a lot of people are saying Intel needs right now to be super competitive. Against against AMD. But we'll just have to wait and see until we get it on the test bed. If you guys want to see that uh, follow-up content, feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. And toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It helps a lot. Also check out the merch store with the new heatsink logo plastered on shirts and hoodies. They're super comfortable and super high quality. A great way to support the channel as well. Until next time, guys, thank you again for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.